Hello everyone. It is uh, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure and I hope you're all having fun. I hope that the new year, I think this is going to be a good year. I think a lot of cleansing, a lot of good things are going to happen this year. I think last year was a tough year. A lot of things coming down and uh, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of cleaning this year, getting rid of those uh, corrupt little things going around. And This could be a good year. You never know. But uh, uh, I'd like to do a... Um, uh, spiritual video here, but I'm not going to do that till uh, I think this weekend. And I come in here and have a chance to sit down and really talk a, a little bit more about that. Although we do have a spiritual question in here and might give me a chance to take off with that. So let's see how far we can go with that. How you face people doing there? You all doing good? We got some more cases here, and I'll try to lay them out the, the best way I can here for you. Uh, they don't have a laundry list. I don't have enough on these cases to give you too much of an in-depth look. But, you know, really when it comes down to it, it's all about the cases and what you can do with what's in front of you, you know, what's involved. And we just remember, though, that keep it simple and that always when you're looking at this, 90% of the time, actually, I'm going to say 99% of the time, it's, al it's acidosis. And I know a lot of you guys are doing the high pH waters and stuff. That'll create alkalosis. And so the word balance, and I've done videos on balance before, and it's like, hey, if I learned anything, hopefully it's balance because that seems to be the thing that kicks you in the butt. Go one side too far, the other side too far, you know, but it's that middle path, as Buddha said. It's that middle path of the least resistance, no desireless path, as the Buddha said. You can go down and look at all the spiritual giants or what's considered as spiritual giants through the dawn of time, and you'll find a consistent flow to what they teach and what they have to say to the people of the earth and other places. Um, just just what it is that's trapping you here and not giving you the view of that. So we've talked about that quite a bit. And, but anyway, I want to do uh, question and answers here. So hopefully get uh, there's some good questions here. I'm still, maybe this weekend I can come in and do a few more hours and try to catch up a little bit here. The day I get caught up with you guys, I don't know. So uh, appreciate you taking your time, though. I, I can't tell you how I love you guys and how much uh, this time that you take for yourself is important. It's important for yourself to regain yourself, to collect yourself both in who am I syndromes and then getting the bodies healthy. So getting the human body healthy is much more simplistic than what's put out there. And so if I could say anything on these videos when you are suffering, don't get trapped in the concept of diseases. Uh, this might sound a little weird to some of you that are just coming in on this, but uh, the concept of diseases is a totally illusionary concept. Uh, all, all matter deals with chemistry and the two sides of chemistry and the effect those two high sides have when they come together. Uh, you've got uh, the two major fluids of the human body. You've just got a bunch of cells. It's the consciousness, the awareness of the cells. But that's not all that you have. You have an emotional body. You have a mental body. You have a mind. And you have emotions. And each thought has vibrations to it. Each emotion has vibrations to it that can either lock you or free you. You generally find freedom on the other side of thought and on the other side of emotions. And if you look at the, the spiritual greats through the dawn, they talk a lot about the desireless state, which we've referred to in a few videos here, to begin to live your life, especially those that know that they want to go on, they don't want to repeat the journey. Uh, for those that believe in reincarnation, in other words, you do not want to reincarnate into the lower, more material worlds, which is understandable. And therefore, you have to stop creating in them. And it's the opposite of how you get here. It's the opposite. How you stay here. You know, when you create, you got to pay responsibility for things. And I think that's important for people to understand is that you're the creator here. No one else. And so everything that comes to you is in relationship to your thoughts 
and your emotions, your feelings. And if you don't like your life and what's coming to you, change it. And you change it by taking the lead dog position, not in an ego position, but a lead dog over your mind and over your emotions. You get control. The only way to get control, and you can't gain control by thought. Thought only digs you deeper into the mental worlds, emotions. You can only get yourself free by living in the present moment, by not thinking, by not desiring, by not playing in the field of dreams, so to speak, or in creation. So it's simplistic. Try it and have some fun with that. Spend this year in contemplation of trying to be the observer or the watcher of life instead of the thinker and the planner and that which puts forth because it only keeps you here. And you can sit back, and if you sit back and you start being the observer, you'll find that God force will flow through you much better, and things will be done for you. You, will, you don't have to think about it. Everything is already in motion and moving. You're not going to become static, because nothing in this universe, if we can learn anything, nothing is static. And I say that to you German iridologists who think that the coloration in the eyes are just indications. You're delusional. Uh, the science doesn't make sense when you think in those terms. And uh, nothing is static. Nothing. There is always change at one level or another, except for consciousness. And I'm going to address this matter. In fact, if you guys don't get mad at me, maybe I'll address this one guy here that asked me about souls. And uh, I did have a chance to kind of look over these a little bit while I'm waiting on Drew to come back from Din Din. Uh, okay. Well, I had it here somewhere. Enough to say, well, darn, I'm just going to have to run over it when I come to it. So let's go ahead and, and start on that. And then when I run into that, I'll latch it on and complete that. This is from Gavin. And uh, his question is that about eight years now, he has been suffering from follicle, folliculitis which is hair follicles, it's his inflammation of the hair follicles. Now, I'm going to jump down here because you have to understand that all inflammatory conditions are autoimmune problems, basically. And that's just what you're saying here. You said uh, uh, folliculitis, uh, incurable as it is an autoimmune condition caused by either bacteria or fungus. They're all all the itises are inflammatory conditions. Now, let's go back and we're going to say condition, meaning what? A disease? Uh, uh, what, what, what does medical doctors try to mold and form symptomology into? And to, to go back and look at the simplistic view of this, go back, understand that all tissues in your body has cells that make up the tissues, and then two fluids that take care of those tissues. So there is only two sides of chemistry that we understand anyway, and we have the uh, what we call the corrosive or uh, causative side, caustic side, if you will, and then we have the healing, regenerative side. And by now on these videos, this is important that one understands the simplicity of those two things. And that one foot in the human body is simply the sewer system that deals with the waste from the cells, and the blood is simply the kitchen that feeds the cells. And if you keep life that simple, you'll be surprised how simple it is to understand any type of inflammatory condition from cystitis to folliculitis to retinitis to you name it. It all has its basis in which side of chemistry? Exactly. It's acid side, because acids equal inflammation. Acids also equal proteins. So proteins, as a rule, are inflammatory, because proteins are acids. And we loosely call them acids, but 
you know, good example, gluten. It's a protein. These are inflammatories. These are mucosic or mucous membrane uh, uh, causatives. In other words, they create a mucosic response when these acid proteins are ingested because your body doesn't want them. And when your body doesn't want anything, the mucosa automatically produces mucus to try and stop, coat, in some way enslave the chemistry you've ingested. And of course, dairy proteins are the most mucosic, responsive proteins of them all. Shows you how bad your body does not want this um, food source when it's raw from mother. Not a food source after you pasteurize it. What is uh, pasteurized milk? Two or three atoms away from plastic or something? Not, not too far. It's like... Uh, margarine and uh, all, all that that implies. Soy lecithin is a good example of that. All, all these are way up there and of course everybody recommended lecithin at one time. I sold the heck out of it in health food stores for cholesterol problems. It's a lipid. So you know it's amazing but it's amazing to understand the processes and how far up the chain you get these things when you ultra cook them. Way out there in chemistry so foreign to the human body that obviously it's not even usable by the body. It's not bioavailable at all to the body. And more caustic, more uh, mucosic responsive, if you will. So one has to be careful with these. So I think you really get a sense by looking at the videos, Gavin, what your problem is. And it's simply acidosis, just what you said. The problem here is that when you see it in the hair follicles, you also know it's systemic. It's all through you. There's no surprises here. And you really got to open up your doors. So there's two things. You, I think you made, alluded to this. Let's, let me go ahead and read this. While began as small pimples in an isolated area, eventually overcomes, over time, spread to pretty much the whole crown of the head. And now I have raised red scar, which is apparently due to the destruction of the hair follicle. And I'm begging to see... Uh, hair loss around the crown of my head. I have managed to uh, stay away from taking any tablets for my condition, uh, only occasionally relying on a topical uh, steroid type uh, uh, treatment. Just uh, in case I am aware of that, uh, a few years prior to getting this condition, I suddenly developed hay fever and uh, allergic uh, rhinitis. Now, let's stop there. Because as we talk about the lymph system, and the constant dumping of sewage from the cells. Think of New York City in a, a garbage strike. What happened the last garbage strike? City workers strike. Sewage started piling up on the streets and piling up on the streets. And of course, if you're a meat eater and you're not, and you're throwing these wastes out on the street, you're not using your food disposals, yada, yada, yada. You got some pretty gnarly, smelly, stinky trash, you know, on its way back to the atom structure again. And so this trash keeps building up until somebody comes and starts picking it up again, correct? Think of inflammation in that way is that no one's picking up the trash. Well, where's the trash coming from? The cells. These are little people that poop. These are little people that take in chemistry and magnetics and, and metabolize, respirate, or in some manner utilize this chemistry and then poof, spits out the byproducts. Somebody's got to remove these byproducts. And as someone said in here talking about, and we've talked about this, a question in regards to does the body dump these acids back into the venous system? Think about that. And what that means to the human body to dump several pounds of acids into the venous system. Make sense? If you're a chemist and you know the physiology of the body and you think that's true, I think you're smoking something in the back room. I think you're not getting the whole picture of what that could cause the human body. And in a very fast way. Because people don't eat alkaline foods. You would have so many deaths early on in life, you can't even, wouldn't even begin to understand that. It is totally fallacy. It is the kidneys. 
And there's someone asking a question about that, and I'll pre-answer it. This is about kidney filtration. If you don't believe it, don't filter your kidneys. Get yourself a tumor going and just see what happens when you get the kidneys filtering. You guys, all your practitioners, will see that when you're dealing in so many of these cysts and tumors and things out there. Until you see the sediment and get the kidneys filtering, you're going to have a hard time moving that tumor or cyst out of there. You might have to be pulling some of it sometimes uh, with some black salve or something to, to, until you get the kidneys filtering. I mean, this is how important this is. This is a filtration problem. This is a kidney problem. Most problems that man face actually can go right down to the kidneys and adrenals. That can go to the thyroid and uh, pituitary. This creates systemic acidosis this way. And so it would make sense that in time, not only are you seeing spreading, it's not spreading, it's building. It's accumulating. Uh, not good, because then the next thing you worry about is tumors in the brain, which is very common nowadays. Not good. Or tumors in the eye. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. So, allergies. And this is another question someone asked here about allergies. Which system do you think deals with allergies? Your immune system. Okay, so which system is your immune system? Think about it. Bunch of cells, two fluids. Where's your immune system at? A few uh, years prior to uh, getting this condition, I said, oh yeah, okay. So we, we have uh, a, a tremendous amount of, of acidosis in the head area. And I'll tell you one thing, Gavin, clean up those bowels. Use the GI broom, whatever you can to get into your gut. Stomach and bowel, GI broom. Start cleaning up those bowels. Make sure your kidneys are filtering and just clean. And hope the heck you get a cold and flu-like symptom in the winter here. Go out naked in the cold. Maybe you'll catch a cold. Yeah, and uh, dump your sinuses or neti pot yourself or whatever you have to do, but start trying to pull this out, even if you have to go into fruit fasting or water fasting to do that. Because the next thing, my friend, and you're a young person, is uh, dementia and Alzheimer's. And I've said this before, you're going to see Alzheimer's and dementia in, in 40 and 50 year olds coming. Look, look at how many young lads have balding heads. Scary. Scary, a, a scary e e. I'm getting into raw food for the past year, but it is hard to maintain, and is also, and I also purchase your herbs at I P and a jar, and definitely notice that the kidneys are filtering. Yeah, all right. So now you get more aggressive with the diet. That's kind of what I, I get here. That you're not aggressive enough with the diet, and I would be because of this problem. You have a long way from here down to the kidneys. So you got some work to do, and the and the, the esophagus and all this kind of is in your way. So it's just a total cleanup type of scenario. Don't be surprised if you get a little bronchitis doing this too. You know you're going to have some cleanup going on, some sinus drainage. Yeah, how are you going to get that stuff out? The skin. See, and that's what you you want to kind of take that burden away from that skin. I just wanted to see what can uh, combination of herbs you would recommend to help me take this to the next level. Well, I would do the two kidneys for sure. And um, two lymphatics, one capsule and one liquid. Now, I always go that way. One capsule, one liquid. Two of each one of those, I'd hit my adrenal glands. I'd do the stomach and bowel. Uh, and, of course, the lymphatic capsules are going to help clean on that GI tract wall. So now you've got all the power coming to clean, to, to filter, uh, to enhance. And so all this coming to you will help you. And then you're probably going to have some sinus healing crisis and some mucousy type healing crisis, which would be good to you, you know. And just keep opening up those doors because that's all you can do. There's, there's nothing you can do here. I mean, you could uh, do some cold applications of the head, but I wouldn't do any more steroid stuff. I mean, that's just going to land you in more trouble. Anything anti-inflammatory, of course, is going to be antacid. Isn't that interesting? Because it's the acid side that's inflammatory. So anything that's alkaline or base is anti-inflammatory. How interesting. And work on it that way, man. And you'll be okay, Gavin. Oh, big hugs. This is from Krista in Canada. See, now I've gone through all 12 detox kits and am still taking stomach and bowel number three. Now, 
on these stomach and bowel formulas, you want to try to get yourself to two, three times a day. At least two twice a day. Or three twice a day. We used to do three twice a day. And I kind of moved it to make it kind of even with everybody, all the other herbs, so two, three times a day. But if you're on number three, the goal is to get on number one. Number three has a little cascara sagrada in it. Number one has nothing in it to help you move. So the whole idea is to get away from number three and move yourself down to number two and then down to number one. So by now, you should be able to get off of number three and go to number two because these are not laxatives. They're not addicting. And therefore, then you can start moving your move down to number one because you need to move your bowels on your own. Uh, the electrical fiber, uh, the power of the raw, you should have nice bowel movements, a couple a day on raw, easy. Um, so, a, a, with no help. These are restoratives, meaning that they're in there cleaning and, and, and trying to enhance and heal and things like this. That's what those bowel formulas are for. Uh, unfortunately, we have to use a little movement power and cascara being the best of those. Because I'm telling you, look at study your herbs and none of them are as gentle as cascara is. And non-addicting, so you can go from number three to number two, number five to number three to number one, wherever you're at. The idea is to move backwards uh, to number one, which has nothing in there to, to move you. So all the power of that formula is going to restoration of the GI tract. Which number three isn't bad, same way, but I like to see you back down to number one. Kidney, uh, both herb and tincture, perfect. Lymphatics, uh, both uh, tincture and uh, capsule. Adrenals, perfect. Parasite. Uh, the parasite ones stay on for a month or two, especially if you have a lot of candida or something. Come off. You can play with parasite M on and off if you like with that. Uh, brain and nerve is a good take, especially with uh, a slow peristalsis. Uh, you want to enhance the nervous system of the body. The adrenal glands, of course, are a good take. That'll inspire neurotransmitters. Affects the autonomic, which is peristalsis. But at the same time, uh, the brain and nerve formula might help you there as well, too, because you check your eyes for nerve rings and stuff like this. Now, here's where I see the issue. I am mainly on fruits and berries and salads, steamed veggies, some soaked nuts in the evening. I am very thin and can't eat less. So, it isn't about eating less. It's really about digestion, absorption, utilization, and elimination. It's about these four processes. And to understand what affects digestion, absorption, and utilization, we have to go all the way to the butt end of the donkey and look at elimination first because that's what's not happening for the cells to function properly. They're not being able to remove the sewage on the streets. And that's the kidneys and the, and the lymphatic system. If the lymph system dumped into the venous system, boy, would it be a heyday. Unfortunately, we're not so lucky. So, she's a problem here, but let's keep, let's keep reading. I do get so hungry at times. So, it's possible, uh, uh, sweetheart, you're, you're starving because you, it's possible you have malabsorption from lymph stagnation. Here comes the clues. I live in cold Canada, so I have to keep warm, which I totally agree with that. However, you have a thyroid there that's supposed to pick up and warm the body. So there's a little of that you want to look at. Plus, I agree, uh, cold food in cold weather is a little out of balance. That's why generally your islanders are always much healthier because they can eat cold fruit in the winter. Here, or in, uh, especially not so much in Florida, but when you get up into the northern, more hostile environments for humans, you can it's hard to eat on point and, and and you can see that in your own effort to struggle to eat well you can see why man just didn't even consider to struggle he just ate dead animals their milks and everything else lost his way in health now we must find our way back because the destruction of humans are at risk because of the heavy heavy acidosis and the tremendous urinary tract and gi tract destruction these are the two areas, although, my God, we're seeing a lot of humans in total destructive disarray. 
in terms of systemic acidosis and cell function. Some people are in just so bad a shape now, it's not even funny, dragging their human bodies around with them. Uh, okay, so I am in my 60s and have severe eczema as a baby. So already when this lady was a baby, her lymph system was a mess. And right there, I think you can show or demonstrate that the kidneys weren't up to par. And the skin, even in the infant, was taking up the, the, the fight for the removal of acids in the body. And it shows how long this lady, at one level or another, her cells have been suffering in her body. Had dairy and meat for most of my life. And right there is the problem. That is the key problem of man. When it was asked with Marcy and a bunch of the guys uh, yesterday, they were asking me, what's worse, protein or grains? Well, most grains are protein, gluten's protein, so most, most grains are considered more starch, of course, than they are proteins. But there's still a high protein content to them. So, guess what my answer was? Protein. Protein will get you every single time. Get back into the 1800s, early 1900s, and look up some of the natural hygienic uh, people books on proteins like uh, Dr. Tilden and, uh, oh man, Carrington. I mean, there's a, a list a mile long. At school, I try to have these books for you, but not too many people are interested in the old books which is uh, too bad because then you get to really see a, a flow to where we are today and that it wasn't that long ago we were preaching this in the 1800s. Isn't that amazing? Uh, but ate very health conscious for most of it. Lots of supplements, etc. I don't know why people think taking supplements are healthy. I guess it's a good brainwashing job, huh? The skin problems were non-existent for 40 years plus, and then they returned. I now have a scaly skin inside my ears that keeps coming no matter how often I clean them. Well, because you can't clean this. This isn't of dirt. This is uh, the destruction of cells by acids. And so you, you can't, you're just going to keep destroying cells. Uh, I am not filtering through the kidneys. Not good, sweetheart. Got to do that. And I didn't think you were. I mean, I think you're in a genetic stance here. So hit the kidneys hard. If you have to, get a glandular that's a kidney glandular and work with that as well for a bottle or two. See if you can shake those kidneys loose at the same time. Hit your adrenals pretty good here. And I am at a loss what to do. Get your kidneys filtering, first of all. Because if you can't get your kidneys filtering, I don't see where people are getting remedies. And they're not. And you guys on Facebook will see that yourself. If those kidneys aren't filtering, your case is tough. They don't seem to get better. Once they start filtering, it seems like, wow, everything's racing to the door again. And that's interesting as you observe this. You know, science should be more observation than, than uh, uh, intellectual uh, hypotheses that are basically theories that uh, uh, half the people disagree with. So, I mean, I just think that observation in science, science should be an observed study of whatever it is, and, and, and as much as possible. And it's still tough to understand how God did it. My God. And not, uh, let me see, I lost what to do. I can't do a water fast. I will waste away. My skin is now pretty saggy on my body and have lost my firmness. Now, where might we go with that? We might think this lady, since she's got ears, you know, scaling and everything, would it be a stretch to work ourselves right in here to where? Thyroid and parathyroid gland. And she does mention it's cold up there. So that little coldness is like, oh, do you get cold? Thyroid. Well, if she's getting saggy skin, chances are she has a parathyroid weakness to kaboot, meaning she's not toning her skin because even though you, you can be big and lose weight, your skin needs to tone. Yes, you'll have some flabby skin for a while, maybe, but you need to tone. And tone, people have a misunderstanding of health. Health isn't a saggy, thin body. Not on your life. It is health and vitality and firmness and snappiness. And that's achieved when all tissues are healthy. 
and calcium utilization is where it should be. So I would look at that, my dear. I would get those kidneys filtering and really, you know, start detoxing. I'll say this, you know, try to get it through the winter here. I would heat myself up on warm teas, herbal teas, and eat the cold uh, fruits and berries and stuff because you're going to have to kick it up sometime or another, lose the nuts, and especially while you're detoxing because you want to clean the head. You're 60 years old, and if we at 60 years old don't save our kidneys and get our kidneys filtering, that's what will kill you. As a rule, unless something might runs over you with a Mack truck or something, but it's enough to say that, you know, filtration is key to this. And this is my take on it. And what we see here, and what a lot of practitioners in the world are seeing too. So that's what's nice about all of us. We don't mind sharing information. And I think that's important, because it's important to, for all of us to work kind of on the same page. Because if I'm saying one thing and someone else is saying another, you breed confusion and then that poor soul gets lost and they don't do anything to help themselves. That's why we all need to work on the same page and um, at the same time share information. Good information is fun anyway, especially if you're a healer and understanding how you move someone from Hellville to Wellville. Now this is Betty. Hello, Betty. And thanks for the hugs, my dear. Back to you. Uh, Betty, your videos? Have, oh, thanks, honey. I appreciate that on the videos. She's got a couple questions here. One is, what causes food allergies? Well, I just will use one word. Toxicity, toxemia. You can throw in acidosis in that. But toxemia, when the body's full of proteins and full of acids and, 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 and different food byproducts that are not well metabolized, the body is kind of like getting too much sulfur. There's a line where you become then allergic to sulfa drugs. And then you go into an anaphylactic shock if they give you penicillin or something like that. Same type of thing. Whether it's peanuts, you know, whether it's just, it's proteins that are at issue, whether it's gluten, doesn't matter. Proteins are always at issue because these are the most uh, mucosic responsive foods out there. The body doesn't want them. And this is just more evidence to show that proteins are not as number one on the human list as carbon is, and etc., etc. But it also shows a backed up lymph system. Your lymph system can deal with proteins up to a point, but when your lymph system is backed up, you're full of mucus, then anything can res be responsive to you. Anything can start tripping you into cold and flu-like symptoms. And what one has to learn is they need to allow the body to move through these experiences and clean itself out. Because one of the worst things that medical doctors have done is got in the way of the body and its healing ability. It, medical people don't understand the healing ability of the body. Oh, isn't that a miracle? Body, but there's a chemical process to that. There's processes obvious to the healing state. And it's not in the acid zones that you get healing. Sorry. And the problem with most pharmaceuticals is they fall under the acid zones. And of course, when you isolate chemistry, you're asking them to get a butt whooping. You just can't isolate God. You can't play God because there's already one. Even though you are one. Now, all those dichotomies. How does protein affect the kidneys? Well, I've said this many times. That's, that's your kidney breakdown. It's like I uh, told you about the lady that was peeing out parts of her bladder and she had been on the Atkins diet for five years. Just being on a high protein diet for five years caused her bladder to start decaying. Your body can't deal with repetitive acidosis on top, on top of the inability of you to filter your waste out. So take a kidney that's not filtering properly. Not only are you going to back up all through you with sewage from the cells, like on New York, no one's going to pick up the garbage, so it's going to build up, so you're going to feel swelling, you're going to feel pain, you're going to see the word inflammation diagnosed, autoimmune problem. Just remember, when a medical doctor tells you this is an autoimmune problem, that's the first indication this medical doctor, or naturopath, or osteopath, or chiropractor, hasn't got a clue what's causing the problem. That's your first catch-all drawer is, I don't know. It's an autoimmune problem. I don't know. It's in your head. I don't know. Uh, it's genetics. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of I don't knows. 
Well, we don't have a lot of I don't knows. We have a lot of I knows. We've got some I don't knows, but we have a lot of I knows, and that's what we need to change this world into. Oh, that's simple. You know, and get that. Kidneys are a big deal, and I've said this many times before. It's what kills most people is kidney failure. It's a big, big deal. It, the eliminative organs. Remember, I said this before. People talk about the liver as a detoxifying organ. They're going after the liver. I have news for you. The liver is a chemical factory. It is an it is an organ that is just made of cells and a whole bunch of oh, just two. Oh, I get it. Two floods. Well, wait a minute. Then when we see hepatitis, we see inflammation in the liver. What side of chemistry is causing that? When you go to pathogens or like bacterium and funguses, you got to understand what their job is in the human body. That's the point the finger, although we're going to read a sad case here in a minute. And it just, oh, it, it hurts me to talk about this one case. I'm, I, I'm devastated with this one case. So the lymphatic system drains into the venous system or the kidneys. Well, you can go with the medical thinking on the venous system, or you can go with us on the kidneys. I suggest you go with us, and you'll get a remedy. You go with them, and they have a chance to kill you. How do the adrenals control the kidneys? Oh, uh, sodium, potassium, neurotransmitters, neurotransmitters in the nervous system to the kidneys, and then your, your steroids. Your steroids control the same thing in the kidneys they do everywhere else. So they're, they're involved in anti-inflammatories, they're involved in acids. You see both factors in the body everywhere dealing with, with uh, uh, this inflammatory process, this, this whole process actually, even metabolism. But in the forms of elimination, we have the mineral control within the kidneys and we also have the neurological control in the kidneys from the adrenal glands. Big deals, big deals. And we also have a pituitary sitting way up there that also can control the kidneys. So we got several places to look when we talk about kidneys. Now, can the thyroid, parathyroid, have any effect upon the kidneys? Yeah, I don't know. I know they're going to turn around and whoop on the adrenals because if you need the adrenaline or the epinephrine, you're going to lose your dopamine. That's going to actually shut down your kidneys. So that's why stress is always you see more lymphatic problems in a stressful situation because you're changing neurotransmitters. You're shutting down one set of people and turning on another set. We don't need you right now. What we need is energy to the muscles, fight or flight. So you're going to see elimination suffer from that. We've talked about this before. Notice that in a stressful situation, you don't poop well. On a trip, sometimes you get constipated because you can't poop. Stress, stress in levels you don't consciously think about, but subconsciously do. Oh, this plane's going to, could go down any minute. This car is going to have a, could have a crash any minute. Things that you don't think about that you don't want to consciously think about, but that your body does perceive. Can, uh, can't you get a crash from the fluctuations in blood sugar? Can't you get a crash from the fluctuations in blood sugar from eating just fruit? Well, I have yet to see any primate, particularly the orangutans, enter the hospital from blood sugar problems. No, and guys, you've got to get this one too because that's an important question. What is the essential component in chemistry to life? Now, you can have some argument there that nitrogen is. You can have some argument that hydrogen is because it's found in, in the universal atom. But really, when you come down to life at this level, you're looking at two major components, carbon and oxygen. And carbon and oxygen, and we talked about this in the last two videos, is exactly what your car uses to burn. So you can't get away from sugar, and if you do, you're putting yourself or your cells in, in harm's way. And the only way you can get away from a sugar is go totally to protein. And you're still going to get some, but you're going to go much higher on the nitrogen and hydrogen side. And that's all the acid side of chemistry. And that's just what the body can't deal with is over acidosis. That's obvious. Take a look at most people's conditions. Because not only have you had the ingestion of acids, every cell in your body is producing acids. So you have 100 trillion cells producing acids, then you're bringing in acid chemistry. Where do you bring in the predominant base site of chemistry at? 
Because look at the crib cycle, look at all the cycles and metabolisms uh, of proteins and fats and sugars. Most of the byproducts are acids. Acids are the universal byproducts of activity, whether it's metabolism, respirations, running, jumping, who cares? All involved in creating of acids. And we have to understand that there has to be the proper dealing with acids. It's kind of like nuclear waste. How do we properly deal with nuclear waste? Well, it's one nuclear plant thought we sold to a fertilizer company and we throw it all over the farmland. That happened out west and started killing a bunch of cattle. Or we can send it in the oceans and kill a bunch of fish, or we can send it to outer space and toxify another plant. I, I, you know, it's just insane stuff. But you got to understand that your sugar is a key component to every meal. Carbohydrates are essential in every meal, and carbohydrates are sugar components. Sh carbon chain constituents, which are sugars. Now, if you said starch, then uh, we could be talking here. But I'll say this to you here. Betty, if you have weak adrenal glands, you're going to have sugar metabolism problems as a rule. Sometimes we can't hardly tell the fluctuations, but then you can start to see them, whether you go hypo, which is low blood sugar, or hypo, which is type, or hyper, which is type 2. Either way, a low is always going to make high. You're, anybody that has hypoglycemia, just hang on, get older, keep eating your acid foods, and it'll go away. Of course, it'll replace itself with high blood sugar, and of course, low blood pressure will replace itself with what? High blood pressure. And now you're on the way to the destruction of the kidneys and a, a lot more uh, quicker, shall we say, a lot more rapid. So if you ever try, you guys, we got to change the world's concept of sugars because killing everybody. And it's not proper physiology. Get a book. Read, read, read metabolism. Read, what, read about these, uh, you know, carbon and oxygen and how, how, you know, ATP is formed and all that kind of stuff. But your key component to your life is always oxygen carbon. Try to get away from it. And uh, you won't be happy, I guarantee you. You won't be happy. We're carbon prints, not nitrogen prints. This is from Emily. Dearest Dr. Morris, I love that. Thank you, sweetheart. I like the word Emily, too. Emily, that's a beautiful name. My name is Emily, and I live in Arkansas. That's where all the uh, uh, gemstones are. Uh, I like Arkansas. Arkansas has got a lot of the um, uh, crystals and stuff like that. Pretty neat stuff. Please talk about weaning oneself from a pharmaceutical medication for high blood pressure. Since November, I have been 80-20, taking an adrenal glandular kelp and herbal formulas. With all my heart, thank you for your love. Oh, thanks, Emily. Thank you. Back to you, honey. Back to you. Here's a big cyber hug. You know, if you had to argue the need a man for pharmaceuticals at this late date in his health issues, I'd have to say that I probably would get on the wagon that we have to have a few. Because man has taken himself so deep into the forest. And I don't know what to tell you. The whole idea of a chemical medication is a stat, which is an emergency need right now. Stat need means right now. And to use it until you fix the problem. If you had to argue any value that the pharmaceutical would have over an herbal or a homeopathic was that it would, it could have the ability to help you sustain a little bit while you fix the problem. However, when you look at the beautiful stuff in homeopathy, that nixes a lot of pharmaceuticals right there. The herbal side is totally cleaning and rebuilding and going in and make healthy. So you're going to use that side for your wellness. Although there's so many herbs and spices we use as pharmaceuticals. We use as uh, emergency situations. 
antispasmodics, bleeding formulas to stop uh, bleeding, internal bleeding. That's the neat thing about herbs. We got homeostat, uh, hemostats, we got which stops internal bleeding. We that's a bleeding formula. We got antispasmodics, which is antispasmodic. These are great for pain and spasms and things that where tissue is being so acidic that the calcium is being robbed or or the nerve uh, myelin sheaths are so broken down that you have easy spasticity or you have high neurotoxicity which leads to spasms and convulsions and etc 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 so in actuality there's very rare need of a pharmaceutical if you're on a high blood pressure pharmaceuticals for high blood pressure are dumping the wastebasket pharmaceuticals uh, they're not like um, let's say uh, steroids Steroids lower the gland function so much, this is why you have to titrate. Because once you're on them, and it's kind of like taking digestive enzymes. You take them for a while, and after a while, you start losing the ability to digest anything. Imagine taking something to help you digest, and in a year from now, you can't digest anything because you took digestive enzymes to help you instead of fixing the problem and eating more raw, which carries its own digestive enzymes in with it. Or it's like any steroid. So those are the only ones that you really want to titrate off. Anything that's more life-threatening, antispasmodic and seizures, you want to go to an herbal antispasmodic. A lot of people have been able to get rid of pharmaceutical antispasmodics for herbal antispasmodics. They're not near as addicting. Um, the One of the worst addicting antispasmodics out there, cinnamon, that's, that's what you give for Parkinson's. I've had a couple of those cases where I just couldn't get them off of. They were so addicted that with a little, just a short period off of it, and major spasticity, seizures and stuff. And it's like, oh my God. So there isn't a time. If you're worried about that, see your medical doctor for sure. And you tell them what you're doing and tell them what you want to be done. And don't take no crap from them. You know, the problem is we go, yes, sir, yes, sir. And so a lot of people buy into their crap. So you got to you got to you got to get your power back. Understand exactly what you're doing, what you want to do. And if you're on a pharmaceutical, say, "Doc, I want you to help me come off of this." Whether he understands it or not, who cares? Educate your local medical doctor. And then detoxify your body while you're making well, because unless he sees you getting well, he's going, well, "You want to come off of it? You're doing nothing to help yourself. Uh, you're just going to have high blood pressure." But you know better because you're doing something about it. You're fixing the cause of the problem. Here you have high blood pressure. Take this the rest of your life. Does that sound reasonable and godly? Hell no, it doesn't. And it's not true. So things like high blood pressure medications, as soon as your blood, it's easy to get your blood pressure under control and get it down. And then it, get it cleaning out your kidneys. And then, you're, then as your blood pressure comes down, I'll say this. I personally would never take a blood pressure medication if my diastolic was 90 or lower. And I wouldn't take any for a high systolic. That's the adrenal glands. Now, what about the swinging blood pressure? One minute it's high, one minute it's normal. One minute it's high, one minute it's normal. How are you going to take on a consistent dosage of high blood med pressure medication, how are you going to control the swinging blood pressure and what causes it? So you have to understand that when you have swinging high blood pressure, you never want to take high blood pressure medications because you're swinging too much. You won't be high enough long enough to get you. So you really want to work on that. Well, where does swinging blood pressure come? Cerebellum. This is, this is inflammation in the cerebellum where you see that. And then you'll see a little dizziness, equilibrium, lightheadedness, vertigo, all those things that deal with the parasympathetic deals with the cerebellum. And you'll see that. You'll also see associated tight shoulders, stiff necks, things like that. That's swinging blood pressure. You just have to get yourself moving the lymph. Get your kidneys filtering. Get all this out. Your blood pressure will be down in a few days or a week or so and you're good. Might take you a little longer. Some of you that's chronically lymphatic up. So you don't have to worry. I wouldn't freak out. With, you know, I wouldn't freak out coming off of them. I'd freak out going on them. Real easy, sweetheart, to, to come off of chemical medications. There's too much fear in this world 
about things that there should be no fear over. Man has become fearful of everything. And it's like, no, you guys don't need to be fear of nothing. You guys are the God people. You guys are those that, that walk with the light and the knowingness and the understanding. And that's why this site is, is up here is for you to get your power back, to get your joy back, to get your happiness back, to get your health back, to get your consciousness awakened. Become awakened and see things you haven't seen in a long time because you've been thinking too much, sleeping too much, playing too much in the field of dreams. What's a better dream? Have a nice house or have God consciousness? Depends on the person, don't it? Well, I'm going to go for the God consciousness. Ah, this is Mary, and she said, I hope your uh, New Year's celebration was a wonderful. My celebration is home alone. That is... Uh, that's, that's my best celebration. I'm a recluse. I, I like uh, peace and quiet. I like aloneness. Uh, sitting around with a, uh, someone to rap is good as long as it's the opposite sex and they're, they're good. <laughs> you know, but I'm just saying, you know, it's just, I like a private, uh, I don't go out and uh, celebrate too much. I had a question brought up to me by several people. They want to know how one can live on fruit alone. No herbs or greens. They say that without them, I will become deficient. I looked into this and noticed that many people who claim to be fruititarian do include greens in their diet. What is your take on this? Thanks, Dr. Morris. Okay, Mary. My take is simple. I do firmly, with the understanding of all the vertebrae, the understanding of how the body and the type of chemistry it likes, the type of nutrition that the human species needs, fruit and berries or at the time, I had melons because they're easy to digest, blah, 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 blah. But truly, if you're talking about properly grown, properly picked ripe, you can't get more nutrition than fruits and berries. That's where most of the level and the type of nutrition that man needs are at. Keeping in mind that man sits a little bit on terms of the vertebrae at the highest order. So would not we be at the highest chemical and magnetic ingestion of foods, the highest neurological foods on the planet, because we would have the brain and the neurological need for that, correct? This is why in MS and Parkinson's and Lou Gehrig's and, and all the palsies and stuff, you don't see regeneration until you get to the fruit level. Vegetables are not nerve regenerators. You could argue good for bulk and muscle, and I would argue right with you. Absolutely. That's why you see the herbivore family pretty muscled up. Nobody messes with most of them. So that's why you see that. But then you turn to the primates. Now, I did see a show. It was a this discovery show, and uh, these were baboons. And um, there was this fawn, this baby fawn. And this baboon grabbed it and ate it. Took it up in the tree. Mama tried to save it. That was uh, caught in the act. I hated watching that. But I was forced to watch in that because it seemed to be the thing people wanted to watch. But uh, huh, what karma the lions pay, huh? Anybody that saw that saw how they killed two big lions and ate him while he was still alive. I, I mean... There's a part of nature that just grosses me friggin' right out. And that's that's that part of that. So I don't know where I was, but it's enough to say if you want to have greens in your life, I don't care. But if you want to detox and you want to get it, and why detox? Why always that name? It's simply put that you're going in and cleaning your body out. You're getting your kidneys to filter again. You're getting your eliminative organs back in order. Your GI tract and your urinary tract. You're getting those two aspects of the human body back in order again so that everyone else in there can be happy again. Because have constipation and no one's happy. You're not happy. The head's not happy. And this is the constipation of the highest order. This is an acid constipation, which they all are. But these are high acid doses. This is at the cellular level, unfortunately. So it takes the deepest toll. 
So this is the system that's key to focus on. There's only a few anyway. The body isn't complex. So don't get caught up in the complexities of chemistry and physics and things like that because no one else understands it either in the complex world of intellectualism. It's obvious. It's obvious that if you go to one of us, you you're, you're pretty much can bet you're going to get your remedy. 99% you're going to get your remedy. You can pretty much bet if you go allopathically, you got 99% you're not going to get your remedy because they don't focus on causative problems. They might tell you we're looking for a cause. It's an autoimmune problem, blah, blah, blah. We need more money for research. And that's the whole idiocy of the whole thing. Just a machine that sucks down people's money and lives and doesn't give them any remedy for it. So you can have some greens, but in terms of deficiency, I've mentioned this due to several times, the three doctorate professor in Canada would, would disagree with you on the nutritive content of fruits and berries. He is a three doctorate professor that I think he runs a university in Canada. He would argue with you that fruits and berries have some of the highest nutrition and that the banana is nature's perfect food. And that when you get into the dark berries like blueberries and grapes, power, baby, power, high flavonoids. And it's true. Look at your pH papers and the alkalinity of these foods versus, let's say, the dark grapes versus the green grapes. You'll see a big pH difference between the two. So the argument that there's no nutrition in fruits or very little holds no water. It is a, a stupid opinion based upon no awareness whatsoever. I think that because someone else said that and someone else said that. and That's how we get that. Propaganda flies like, uh, like backstabbing and gossip. And then it ends up being not true. If you want some greens and green juices, I have no problems with that. Uh, I was just uh, meeting with a friend of mine that uh, runs Northern Nutrition, Willie Krishna from uh, Shipshawana, Indiana. I have a lot of great Amish friends and I just had breakfast with him while he was down here. It's uh, minus 15, in, or was this morning in Shipshawana, Indiana. Minus 15. Holy crap. And we were talking about that. You know, and I was talking about alfalfa. And how I put alfalfa in a jar, closed the lid, and let it get really green. And then took it. And the difference between that as an astringent. Now that. You could get some mucosic responses from that. I did. Pulled up a big wad of mucus. So Willie was telling me that one time he went in, out into his pasture. He has a farm, of course. He has horses. And picked some fresh alfalfa. Brought it back to the northern nutrition, his place. And he's got a Norwalk down in the basement. Put it through the Norwalk. And it's like, woo-hoo! You think wheatgrass is healthy. You've got animals... Horses and cows, you don't give them wheatgrass, you give them alfalfa. So I don't care if you have some of that. But in detoxification, you need to step up knowing that fasting is the top of the mountain. But we can accomplish almost everything we need in the fruit and berry and melon level with the herbs. We don't have to get too far out there unless you want to. If you want to, it's a beautiful place to go. Not one people hang around much, water fasting or dry fasting. But Mary, I think that uh, that's how it is. And I have to say that people have to get used to man more as a fruititarian. But he hasn't thought of that because most people that talk in this way are northern people. Islanders have a different language when it comes to fruits. I was telling you about the 96-year-old lady I had in my office from one of the islands. And she was raised exclusively, no vegetables whatsoever, exclusively on fruit. She's 96, and her skin can snap like a newborn baby's butt. And I'm looking at her, and I'm going, you're 96? You're beautiful. You, you look like you're 60-some years old, and then I'm stretching it. Incredible. So I think we have, have adopted some of these these uh, ridiculous concepts and propagandas and things that people thought of and it hanging around in our social consciousness. That's what I hate about the mind. That memory's hanging around with, 
with bull crap that doesn't really have anywhere to go, but it's there and people pick up on it. Universal mind stuff. People ask that question no matter where you are in the world. Gabby, 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 Gabby. Thank you for all you do for all. Thanks, sweetheart. I have a quick question regarding fasting. Oh, I have tried fruits, berries, and melons for a while now and don't see much sediment. Now get this one. This is good. In my urine. I don't uh, see much sediment with water fasting for three days at a time here and there either. But I do see a lot of sediment when dry fasting once a week for 36 hours. Now, I've seen that too, honey. I, Gabby, I've seen dry fasting yield a lot of sediment. And all I can say, this is why. And I think this is a good, good place. And I really love this question because I think this is a good place because she's asking why. Why would that be? Well, think about this. When you start invoking digestion, now you have to direct some systemic energy to that area. You've got to get the pancreas moving in digestive enzymes, whatever, hepatic function, gallbladder function, we might need a little bile there. Uh, you're going to start turning on the juices. You're going to start turning on peristalsis. You're going to start putting energy in areas that deal with digestion and elimination of digestive waste. Well, the problem with that is that it doesn't give the greater energy to the body's detoxification efforts because it's a body that detoxifies itself. And it, you, can, you can try that yourself by not eating and feel, start to feel the tongue get coated, start to feel the body and the mucosic draw, and you start to feel that body wanting to, to eliminate. Eat something and it, it settles back. Go without food and it starts pushing you more toward elimination. And especially those that are so toxic that the body just wants to explode. Some people just go on raw food and immediately they go into a cold and flu-like symptom. I'm just saying, so when you look at that, this is why we go to the, exactly why we go to the fruits and the berries and the melons instead of the greens. Because you want more digestive energy, more trouble breaking down food, more energy involvement. No, because then there's even less still. So I have to say that you should see on a good diet, an all diet, even with veggies, you should see sediment in your urine. And this is just showing you how backed up that you are and that you're not doing that. I would definitely get the adrenals going and keep going down that road of fruits, berries, and melons, water fasting, and dry fasting. I love where you're doing. I think you've got a good head. I think you're going exactly down the road you need to go. I'd probably get on the kidney formulas and maybe do a kidney glandular if you wanted to, but do kidney formulas, maybe with one lymphatic at least, and try to get that uh, kidney estranged and those kidneys filtering. And I would do that and see if that'll help you to get settled. Because you see, should see settlement, maybe not 100% of the time, but definitely 90% of the time. I do. 90% of the time at least. When I don't, I go, ah! Even when I uh, start off the week with a dry fast and get sediment, it stops once I start with water. Uh, it's interesting how even water, how water can stop that. It's like, Damn! I know. So you can see for us practitioners the hard road we have to hoe in, in convincing you guys to get beyond this and really break through some of this propaganda and break through some of this and get into these higher levels. It's a trip sometimes. But I think, uh, Gabby, you're on the right road. Everything you're doing right with that. And just saying you're not filtering as good as you, I would like to see you. But keep going. The fact that you are when you drive fast, you're doing everything that you need to do to dig in. And I really admire that. I just think that this, this is a good example of the things that one should do. You should play with this. I'm going to do all fruit for a week. I think I'll do water for a week or three days. I think I'll just drive fast for the weekend. Those are the things that it takes to pull yourself sometimes out of Hellville and run to Wellville. Sometimes it takes these higher level effects, but know why it does. 
Because when you're ingesting, your body's going through all these processes of digestion, absorption, utilization, and also elimination. Those are each in individually an energetic experience. If I'm giving all my energy away, wait a minute, I want some. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is why thinking. You ever, you ever got into thinking real hard and, man, I'm getting hungry. You are burning energy at another level. And the same thing emotionally. You can just, oh, I'm right it out. These are all energetic experiences. This is why in the now, you're in a totally different world. You're not in creation anymore. You are pure energy. Therefore, you don't have that waxing and waning of energy because you are energy itself. And energy itself, remember in quantum physics, energy is intelligence. So when you look at energy, you translate it to spirit or, or the life force or the prana. And then you start realizing that these aspects, the spirit, the prana, the life force, these are, this is an intelligent force. Well, wait a minute. Is there anything that's not aware at some level or not? No. Because everything must exist within the body of God. You can't have something that is omnipresent and have other things outside of that. <laughs> because you're using the wrong, wrong way of looking at that. That would bring in the factor of many gods. Difficult for the mind to understand something like that. Because it doesn't give you, it never gives you a a wholesome point of the self or the, the point of sucre where you, you finally feel your home, that sort of thing, you know. You're, it's an ongoing, constant movement of activity. So it's, enough, it's enough to say that when we all speak of God, we're speaking of the one, whether it, whatever name people put on it, the creator, whatever you wish and however you wish to look at that, but you can't define it. Because the infinite is undefinable. As soon as you define it, you've limited it and you've insulted it. Because now you're defining something that's infinite. Would you rather be defined as an infinite being or some finite little human that, uh, you know, has to go to the bathroom, take showers, and eat? You want to be infinite because then your awareness, your happiness, your joys are at a whole nother level. Strawberry banana smoothie from Tropical Cafe. And you could get some whey protein put in that, and you could get some uh, yogurt. Oh, I can't believe places do that. Here's a good one. This is from Shannon. My husband had a craniopathy or craniotomy 12 years uh, ago. Uh, the last two years, his head has been pussing. Oh, poor guy. And couldn't find a doctor that would even touch his head. Typical. Ooh. Uh, oh, I got a lot of those stories. They would just say, here, antibiotics and pain meds. The antibiotics never helped, and he kept telling them. He gave up and quit going. I just found a doctor that sent him to a, here we go, down the Posey Road, uh, home to a neurosurgeon, and he had an appointment yesterday. They said he has an infection inside his head. Do you think? Uh, and they scheduled an MRI and CAT scan. Oh, boy, two of them. An MRI and CAT scan. That's a good, that's a good punk of change, you know? A CAT scan. Here we go. We've got, a, we've got a husband here full of acidosis and inflammation, and they're going to do a CAT scan on him. Well, that'll be cute. Make sure, uh, probably too late by the time you get this, and make sure it's a digital one at least. At least you're way down on the rads. Uh, for money to make sure the infection hasn't reached his skull bone that was put back in his head during the operation. He was in a car accident and had internal bleeding. What herbs can I use to help him with the infection and after surgery for healing? And after the surgery... <sighs> well, Shannon, I don't know why they're going to go in and do surgery on him because there's nothing they can do. Clean him out? It'd just be back. And more scar tissue, more inflammation, more acidosis. I don't know why they're going to do surgery on him, open him up again. That'd be insane. I mean, these are things 
that 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 shouldn't be difficult for your hubby to fix. But he's got a head sitting, which is a top of a tree sitting on the trunk. So there's two things that are essential. Clean up the gut, that's a GI tract, and get the kidneys filtering. Because those are the two things that are essential to eliminate this problem. You could ear candle, you could uh, neti pot to get the sinuses to break loose. But this is a case where you'd want to put him on 100% raw food. And if you got a hubby, kick him onto this YouTube. This is for him. 100% raw food. And I would put myself on some grape bass. Because if you're oozing out pus, you're losing out acid sewage. And that means you're not draining. So from the trauma from the accident never healed probably because you probably, the shock of all that, also probably shut your adrenals down a little more. So then you lost more kidney fil uh, filtration. And so now you have a head oozing and pussing. Uh, uh, you're full of acids there. And if you don't get that out, yes, you can get a tumor. Yes, you can get scar tissue. Yes, you can get uh, 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 um, adhesions. But... Uh, oh, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? I need some strawberry smoothie. Brain lesions. Thanks. Brain lesions. All these things can take place from all this. Pus is just acid sewage. Proteins, by the way. Stinky poo-poo. So nasty, nasty stuff. But this is a serious friggin' problem because then pressure can come into this lad and have all kinds of head pressure, all kinds of I want to kill myself syndromes, shut down the pituitary, shut down the body, get depressed. I mean, this is all oh, this poor lad. So this lad needs to deep tissue detoxify and do it yesterday because you're going the wrong way allopathically. There's nothing they're going to do. And if you had a tumor, you can go in. The problem is, is that, and I brought this up in the last video or so, when you have trauma to tissue, somebody's got to clean up the mess. And if the blood cleaned up the mess, there would be no messes left because the blood flows quite adequately through everywhere. It's the lymph system. And this shows that your hubby is not moving his lymph system well up here. And nothing, let me repeat that, nothing good ever happens with this problem. You want to get him going on a fruit, berry, and melon diet. Do some water fasting if you'll do it. Really start getting aggressively moving on this. Upper circ, brain and nerve, two vital formulas that I would be using. Also, would do two kidneys, one gland, one tincture, one capsule. Two lymphatics, one tincture, one capsule. I'd, I'd be going the GI tract, stomach and bowel. I'd be using the GI broom. I'd be aggressively going after my hubby because if not, might not have a hubby. So you really want to get this moving. This is serious stuff. And this lad needs to move his limb system. That's all sewage oozing out his head. And you got to get that draining down through there because the next thing is cysts or tumors. Uh, and, and, and lesions and things like this. Not good. I don't, I, I, this case needs to get moving. Moving, 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 honey. So, Shannon, get your old man to watch this, and old man, get yourself moving. Get this out of you. Because if you let them go in, and what are they going to do? They can saturate your body with antibiotics. Well, that'd kill all the uh, bacteria in your lip nodes. And then, guess what? You still have the sewage. Because this isn't about bacteria. This is about sewage. So they can kill the bacteria trying to break down your sewage for you. And that just leaves you with the sewage. That's not good either. And then killing the bacteria in the lymph nodes, then you don't have a way to break down cellular acids. So then they can hit the kidneys worse or then to stagnate before they even get to the kidneys. This is a big deal. Even though we talk about the simplicity of this, this is right in the life and structure of cells and the human and the soul inhabiting that body. So these are essential things that you've got to do to win these cases. And I don't know where surgery is going to be of benefit to you unless there's a tumor you had to remove out of there. You have to be careful with surgeries, especially those that are really not focused on an issue that it needs to be focused on, like tumors and stuff, or the repair of broken tissue and stuff. If you're just looking to remove sewage and stuff, impossible. Causes more. Hi, Dr. Morse, I hope you're doing well. Yep, yep. 
I sometimes wonder that I must have done some really good work in a past life in order to be drawn to you. Oh, yeah, it, you know, it's, it's, it's an awakening time, you know, it is about time. Uh, and to raw foods and have a desire to seek truth to this life. I, and he's, he, this lad's only 26 years old. Who is this? Uh, oh, she's, it's a female, Clary. Clara, 26 years old. Yeah, I know, but the time you start looking at more spiritual things and raw foods, there's no question your time is here. And it's at a time of excitement. A time of awakening. It's a time of God and love and humility. Because the rest of the world lacks that. They're trapped in their own creation. And you've got power controls. You've got control freaks. You've got people like, I don't mention any names. I don't want to make anybody mad. But we got bad, bad government right now. Control freaks. It's bad. So you get yourself free from that. But yeah. Definitely, you're right on there. You were, it's your time, sweetheart. You talk about young souls and old souls. Well, I do, you know, and, and tell you the truth. Uh, I'm, I'm funny you bring that up. It, there's no age to souls. Not really. I'm looking at it from creation to, to you. You've been around here a long time. Time to leave. That sort of thing. Old soul. You just got here, man. Have fun. Ha! I've talked to souls that have never been at this level before. Come on down. Because mostly after you do this journey, you're going to want a higher experience. Experience with less negativity to it and more beauty and more ability to impress and change your creation as needed. So you can't believe, for those souls that already know, but for those of you who don't, you can't believe what you can do and what you can have. This is just like yeah, you're in school. Time to graduate. All right, all you guys get graduation diplomas. Let's get out of here. So, uh, absolutely. So, when I say old souls or young souls, it really souls is an ageless individualization of God. There's no form. There's no definition. There's only awareness, and it's an alone awareness. There's no, hey, buddy, hey, friend. It's when you start getting into the first stages of God awareness or becoming awake to yourself, however you used to look at those things. And you're starting to see things. You're starting to see all, all matter as just being part of the same stuff. That, that the universal mind, everything is just pieces and individualizations of the whole. So soul is really just an individualization of the one. It's still undefined, still unlimited, and there's levels to that. There's levels to that. The Radha Swami talked about Satnam. Paul Twitchell and the Eckmasters brought out Satnam. But Satnam isn't the end all. There's plenty of worlds beyond Satnam. But it's the first stage that you are out of creation. It's a formless stage. Where God's individualization, that that essence that controls that level, is known as Satnam. Well established in those Sanskrit writings, Satnam is well is understood by a few on this planet, but not a lot. The Radha Swami, or the Yoga of Light and Sound, basically uh, had gotten there. Uh, the Ek Masters had gotten way beyond there and brought that out as well, but. These are levels. And so when you, there's no definition for that. There's no age. So when I say that, you know, it's again referencing how long you've been down here playing the games of creation. And a lot of you are done with that. A lot of you are going to switch from being the I wanters to the I havers. I have all I need because when you have the sucre of God, when you are resting in the arms and the beauty of awareness, and your body's healthy. You don't want for nothing. You don't need nothing. Because you're whole. You're complete. You don't feel like, I need this apple to make me feel whole. I'm already whole. I mean, these are levels that are incredible to experience. Non-physical, granted. And non-mental, 
So there's no definition, there's no uh, analysis, there's no comparisons, because that's the mind. You're in, a, you're in the first realms of individualization of the allness. Still an allness, but individualized. When you move from that level into creation, you take on the ego, the id, as Miss Young used to call it. The id, the ego. That gives you the individualization of me and the individualization of you. I can see you and me as the same, but we're individualized. That is the mind and the ego levels. Pure mind, cosmic consciousness, and the ego, the subconscious. It gives us our individuality, but still separation, because there is still some separation. Even though when you have a cosmic consciousness experience, you don't feel the separation, it's still there. You, you still perceive when I had my first experience with that, I, I still felt my individuality, but I, I felt it as all one. When I left the mental worlds and men entered the worlds of soul, there was just me. There was nothing else. When I first got initiated for that Satnam region, I had 10 days of my life I spent in what I call the city of light because this was a city, I'm sure it was set up for my experience, but it had all kinds of beings in this city. It was just bright light, but no one talked, no one did anything, and it, it was in a, such an extreme alone experience. And I walked 10 days, night and day. Whatever I did physically, I couldn't get, I was, I was there too. I, I wasn't, I couldn't get rid of the experience. It was fun. What was the difference, um, uh, and how would a new soul be born or created? Well, again, that's where you have to separate creation, the defined, the atoms arranged in a structure, so you can perceive the structure, you can ex perceive distances, separation, therefore, I got a banana, I can eat it. When it's the one, there is no separation of materiality. There is no materiality and the individual. It all becomes the one. The word consciousness, the word intelligence, the word awareness, all these words, which are not many, define that state that it's undefinable. You can only experience it. You can't define it. You can't explain it to someone. You can kind of explain, like, be here now, live in the present moment, stop thinking, stop talking, stop desiring, all these little clues to how you you get here, but it's like it's like diet and everything else. Unless you wear the robe, unless you learn to stop thinking, grab control of the emotions, get the, keep that physical body out there away from you. Hard to have those experiences. And through this whole series, I'm going to give you the quick roads to God consciousness. I'm going to just like health, cut the crap off. And how do you have God awareness? without spending years and years of initiations and going through the process of what they call growth, but which is really awakening. All of this is designed, I've designed this to help you in those ways too. So even though I get my little glitches in, I'm, I'm into you to open you guys up. Because that's the key. And your joy will be, there's no words for it. There's no words for ecstasy, nirvana, uh, extreme joy. Uh, I don't know how to define that. Extreme uh, aloneness, uh, not loneliness, extreme aloneness is extreme ecstasy. It's hard to define that. You can only know that when you move into that experience of, of that, that area of pure consciousness, which is you can have that any time because you're already at that level. The only reason you don't perceive yourself as pure awareness it's because your mind is in the way. Your desires are in the way. Your physical body's in the way. You're always home. You just don't know it. So this is why all these little tidbits will help you to gain that awareness of, of life and God and happiness and keep yourself free and having some fun. After all, isn't that what this world is? Have some fun, play with each other, have some fun, do some things, and then check off. Uh, 
It all uh, matters and add. Okay. Born or created. Well, that's the thing is you can't create something outside of yourself. You can't do it and God can't do it. You can perceive it to be outside of yourself in terms of thought, emotions, and separation. Like here's my strawberry smoothie and here's me. Here's my mouth. Not so in God consciousness because it's all the one. So there's no separation at all. There's no need for a smoothie either. Because you are the smoothie. You are the all in the all. That's where all the power, that's where all the consciousness, that's where all the intelligence, that's where everything exists all together. Hard to define that state. That's why we have drugs. <laughs> that's why we had uh, Timothy Leary window pain and LSD. It gave you that, at least that experience of non-thought and extreme now awareness. If you were a weak soul and couldn't control it, you tripped. If you could control it, you had a lot of information poured into you. Because you, part, you are in the extreme now, which floods information to the mind and into the emotions and everything else. If you're listening and awake, it's the mind and the, uh, the mental bodies and the astral bodies and the physical body that takes this huge, gigantic power and awareness that you are and brings it down. Ah, and brings it down ah, into a little form so we can have differences and we can have activity. That's why you have to be controlled to a certain point because how many thoughts have you had that could hurt others? And those are the things. You have to get beyond that sort of level if you want to experience these higher levels. Get pure. Get pure. Just love, be the light. And get a big hug around yourself. Because you are that which is. You are the ultimate of all beings. You just forgot it. And it's your time now to awaken to this. Whoever you are listening to this video. If you don't like this sort of thing, okay. This is for those that do. Just look at our health side of this and how you get well. But I'm also about the spiritual side. And that is more important because... It's your survival, I used to say, throughout eternity. Even though you, you're, you're going to always survive because you can't kill yourself, that's for sure. You can kill your bodies. That's no problem. Most people are doing that already. So thanks for that. Uh, I love those questions like that. And then when, when then are souls made of? Pure, I don't even know what to tell you. Pure consciousness, pure awareness, pure energy. How do you define something that is totally awake, totally something that creates what you see here? You just look at a beautiful flower. Who could create that? I mean, man and his ego, I have to laugh sometimes at man and his little egos. I just, I gotta go, what? And you got a world like this, the beauty of all this, the beauty of how the body works? How about a well and the beauty of how well bodies work? How about the beauty of, I mean, it's just, you're part of that. Matter of fact, you're, not, you, you're a major part of that. You're just playing in the illusion of separation. Feels real, looks real. Remember that thing in physics that, ow, that's solid. No, it ain't. Bone, solid. No, it's not. Bone's not solid. This desk isn't solid. There's always room between atoms. Interesting, huh? But we, you know, in our level of perceptions, we perceive things at different levels. So when you, it's kind of like that picture where you have all the dots in there that has a picture of a dinosaur or whatever inside, but it's all just a bunch of dots. If you look at that, all you see is a bunch of dots. But if you start to detach and quit focusing and unfocus, you'll start to see beyond those dots into the images that were put in there. That's exactly the same thing as, as awakening to God consciousness. Same thing. You have to detach yourself from the drama, from all the dots to see the truth. If not, you're going from one idea, one propaganda. Well, what about protein? Or well, what about sugars? Or what about this? Or what about that? You're, you're sliding off of the, the propaganda of others. 
and you want to get your own awareness, have your own sense of viewing and understanding. And the only way you can get that is drop the mind and get into your higher self, which is nothing but viewing and knowledge flowing in. It's amazing stuff. Good question. I love that, Clark. Good stuff. Love you too. Good stuff. This is Linda. Well, wait a minute. Chuck here, 49 years old. Oh, it's from Linda, but this, all right. Chuck, 49 years old. I have been on your herbs for over four months now. I started filtering at around two to three months. Yeah. I have had, I have bad head and sinus congestion and large polyps. This is so common now today, guys. We've got to get people away from the dairy products and the milks and get these people from her. He's 49 years old, midlife, got a long life ahead of him. Now he's dealing with, I, I grew up with that kind of crap. Cold hands and feet, there's thyroid right off there. And when I drink beer, my face gets very pale. You know, I don't know why that is. Has to do with the stomach and the autonomic nervous system, more than likely. And so uh, either hops or whatever reduces the neurologic or whatever, and it, just, it takes, I don't know, can't even tell you. Hope it doesn't drain the blood out of your head. No, but you know what I'm saying. That's the seat of the autonomic nervous system in the stomach. So something to do with the nervous system and a way it flushes and not flushes, that sort of thing. But all that congestion and all those pop, you got to get that out of there. Chuck, you've got to get this cleaned out of there so you don't have this because tumor's next. Polyp is just a, is a walk toward becoming a tumor, a small tumor. So you want to get these out of there and get up your thyroid moving. Think it's a parathyroid too, man. Go to wine a little bit, organic wine or something instead of beer. And uh, you might want to clean up the GI tract a little bit. Enhance your adrenals and kidneys. Get the nervous system up, which then will, you know, should correct all that. Also, I was using an infrared sauna. I'm glad you stopped that one. Because I tell you, Again, I was telling you about the infrared hair dryer. It dries from the inside out. If that doesn't scare you, I don't know what does. In other words, you're going to burn the cell first before you see the effect on the outside. <laughs> no, thank you. Dangerous stuff. Got to think about those things. Always ask yourself. Um, also, uh, yeah, uh, after listening to you, I stopped, hopefully not too late. Nope. Please, what's your opinion on hot tubs? Well, your trouble is you got to use, yeah, you put chlorine in parentheses, and all I can say, um, oh, Linda and Chuck, the Conleys, I know who you guys are. Well, I've got a whole house RO system where I live. And so at one time, there was a hot tub there, and it was always filled with that. So I don't know. Uh, I'm not good with chlorine or fluoride. So you're going to have to try to find you some RO or get you a small RO filter to fill the hot tub. Thing is, you know, you just got to keep the pH balanced and everything else. You play that game too. Ugh. But I'm not hot on chlorines or fluorides. Uh, uh, no way. I think they're all cancer-causing. This is Brianna. I'm eating a raw food diet, which is predominantly fruit. Ugh. I eat fruit all day and a salad at night. And I think that's a good idea, especially getting working toward your health, getting yourself better. Someday you might have to lose a salad just to get deeper. But, you know, in a general life setting, if you could do fruit all day and a salad at night, you'd wake up so freaking healthy, it wouldn't even be funny. I mean, just incredible. Uh, for my dressing, I like to mix tomatoes and avocado. Ooh, I might have to have some. Uh, I might have to have some guacamole tonight. That sounds good. But I am not, and I've got some good, good uh, ready-to-eat avocados. I am not sure whether half or three fourths of an avocado a day is too much. <clears throat> I, I really think you should listen to your body with that instead of ask, asking me because I don't care how much a person eats. It's what you eat. Now, 
If you've got a tumor and you're detoxifying, it does pay to under-eat a little bit, kind of in a little semi-fasting state, for the same reasons we talked about why on a dry fast you see sediment, and on a water or, or, or fruit fast you don't, or as much. And it's just understanding that when you start invoking the processes from digestion and absorption, metabolism and all this, now you're starting to have energy redirected to functions instead of cleansing and healing. It's a, it's a natural understanding. It's not like the body has the total God force to get itself well. Don't we wish? But you can, as you're working with your consciousness and you're working on quieting that mind and the chatter and you're working in the now, you're bringing in the God force to your cells like they've never seen it. So there's that side of that that can also bring a little imbalance, out of balance, or balance in there. Got to realize, as you grow or awaken, growth is not a good word, as you awaken, you're going to start pumping the power to this world because you're now identifying with the highest source of energy there is and the highest source of intelligence that there is, that which creates the lower. So you're going to see that heavy empowerment of energy to your body. That's why I say, while you're working on spirituality, do this. Get this done early on. That way you can back away from that if you need to because of the high energy from consciousness. You might need to step down on the totem pole a little bit. Some people even go off the raw to cook sometimes to stay balanced. It's another conversation that we have amongst those that understand that we can talk about a little cooked food without creating shock. Uh, for, okay, uh, but I am not sure whether half, okay, okay, I have started including avocado because it's winter, yeah, and a little fat seems to suit me well. You know what, and that's this, this individual, Brianna, is right on with that. And that, that you might have to do, you know, you work yourself the best you can through the winter months. You just do the very best you can, and Brianna has got a good head here. So it's like she's doing really well with that. Uh, I was previously eating only high water content fruits and no salad, but when winter came, yeah, and you might go down to the, uh, the nature's perfect food, the bananas. You might have to go down to the bananas, a little meat of the family, so to speak. Yeah, you might have to do that. I, I think this, this, is, this is what I love about you guys. And this, this is a mark of higher aware people in that they're working themselves through this. They see that a little bit of this will help me right now, but it's still keeping me detoxing. I need to do this. Beautiful stuff. You don't go way over to uh, the meat aisle or something because it's winter. Good job. Good job. I began to lose weight, so I uh, started including them again. I am not sure whether to continue using avocado because it is not very cleansing or is very high in fat. I do not want to become a high fat raw foodist as it seems to cause a lot. It does cause a lot of problems. Oh, this is Sarah. Sarah. Smart girl, Sarah. Like how you think. Well, I think you're right on with that. Uh, I probably have avocado every two or three days. Because if I do too much avocado, I get too much avocado. You know what I'm saying? So, but I love, I love avocados and I, I love um, guacamoles. And like I said, I like to take cucumber slices and dip in guacamole. That's super good. Super, super good. So use cucumbers as your chips. But if you're not detoxifying deep or anything, you can use some organic corn chips. But if you're detoxifying and you're digging deep and you got tumors and you're working on that, then you do your best to avoid those sort of things. But a little dab will do you. You know what I mean? There's some foods that are so strong, a little dab will do you. Mm. This is revolutionary, man. I love strawberries and bananas. Oh, my God. Revolutionary, Revolution Man 2012. Hello, Dr. Morris. I'm happily married, going on two years now. Yeah, baby, got you a good woman. I've been uh, seeing your videos and have subscribed to your uh, YouTube channel. Thanks, man. Appreciate it much. My wife suffers from depersonalization. I was wondering to hear of any uh, health questions or suggestions you may have for her. We would really appreciate it. 
we uh, send our love your way. Well, I'm going to send my love your way. Big time. Big time cyber hug for both of you guys. Well, remember our discussion in past videos on the endocrine gland system. So when you start getting uh, or your glands start working in a more underdeveloped or a hypo state of function, this affects it affects everything because everything basically if you look step back and look at this almost everything is dealt with through hormones or steroids or neurotransmitters or enzymes you can throw all those kind of there together I guess serotonins kind of all those in that little heap so you need these constituents to create activity that activity comes out of the endocrine glands which is hooked to the autonomic nervous system which is then in turn hooked to the central nervous system which is then hooked to the eyes and the brain which then is hooked to the emotional body which you have, which is not physical, and then a mental body you have, which is not physical. All these, all these inputs of activity and past experiences and all these things dictate how the mind turns on the brain and the brain turns on the endocrine glands and this steroid or that steroid, this hormone or that hormone starts moving around, turning on, turning off, moving things around in the body. Pretty simple. When that isn't happening, though, and we've said this a lot about the parathyroid gland in terms of depression and the inability to see someone, see yourself and love yourself and be happy with yourself. Oh, I'm too fat. I'm too ugly. I'm too this. I'm too that. No, you're not. You are what you are. If you don't like your body and the way it looks, change it. Get it healthy. But outside of that, the trueness of who you are is the beauty of who you are. We have all shapes and sizes in creation, big deal. Yes, we'd all like to have this, we'd all like to have that. But you know what? That's not life and how it works. Individuality, differences, all these things. It's all brought up in karma and chemistry and physics and that whole move through the genetic family trees and all these things. Easy to understand when you look at that. So the parathyroid would be one of the big takes that I would have on her is to get her parathyroid up. And I add kelp to a parathyroid glandular and it really seems to help because as you start utilizing calcium and you start getting these acids that irritate and that pull your happiness down, and that fills you full of pain and inflammation, you get these out of there. You get your steroids and hormones in balance. And in balance simply means you're making your glands healthy. The balance comes from healthy tissue and a healthy lifestyle. And then that depersonalization gets, come, goes away. You start getting stronger in the self. Now, what would be the other place we would want to go? For sure. You're right. The adrenal glands. You're always going to go into the adrenal glands because that's the emotional side. That breeds shyness. That also breeds I'm not good enough. That also breeds uh, uh, distancing and all these things. you got to fix these things. And then your wife has to move spiritually. Get herself into loving the self. Spend some time alone with herself and put some big hugs around herself and realize she is a part of the individualization of God like everyone else. She's as bright and as beautiful as every other individualized soul there is. And then beyond that, she's part of the allness of, of the all. So we have to start identifying with our higher selves instead of saying, oh, my physical body. No. Or from the physical body, oh, I'd just love to experience God or whoever created all this. You're putting yourself in a remote situation, a separate situation. The seeker of God never finds God. The seeker of health never finds health. Notice that? That's going back to the intellectualism again. When you're seeking the answers, you're going by other people's opinions and ideas. If I have anything, I hope it's not an opinion. I hope it's facts. What I've witnessed, what I've seen in actuality, and tens of thousands of detoxification cases, and my spiritual journeys, I, that's all we can teach each other, is what we've experienced. If it doesn't hold anything for you, then go on to something else. But if it does, then we can share and enjoy and have some fun with that. But, honestly, if you keep everything simple, boy, it'll change your whole nature of life and everything else. When you realize that this might be your last lifetime. Clean up your affairs. Stop, stop desiring all this stuff. Doesn't matter what you have. If you want a new car, go buy it and drive it. Don't even think about it. Whatever. Don't plan on things. Don't, don't try to 
make this your big nest because you're not from here. This isn't a here place to be from. This place has birth, life, and death to it, and even it will be wiped away one day. Just a rock spinning through space. So I think in depersonalization, those sort of things are essential. And as you move length and filter, believe this or not, you come to a peace. You come to a better joy about yourself. Your body feels good. Your emotions are worked off, and you start to feel stronger emotionally. Everything starts getting stronger and better. And this is what I would recommend, sweetheart, that you do for yourself. Work on your endocrine glands. Get your, get, get, get your kidneys filtering. Get your bowels cleaned out. Get all these acids out. Start spending time enjoying the beauty of flowers, of the water, and the ocean, of the mountains, if you will. Find your place that, that connects you to the God self. Go into a pine forest and sit down and listen to the wind blowing through the pine trees. Nirvanic. Do these sort of things. Take, go to a pine field, take a, a, a pine grove full of pine trees, especially the uh, Australian pines. Take off all your clothes and start running through those pine trees, listening to the voice of God whistling through the, through the uh, whatever you want to call pine tree branches, leaves. <laughs> and just listen to that, that, that sound, that rhythmic sound that you know inside of yourself. And have some fun. Get rid of those things that clench you and that you're wearing like balls and chains. And wake up to a new day to yourself. Because there's nothing else out there. And getting your endocrine glands healthy is key to that. Huh. This is the one, I think this is going to be my last one today. God, you got, there's so many questions. Oh, my God. I'm sad about this. So I hope I don't start crying. You know, I showed you that beautiful calendar with the horses on it. And I always liked Joseph for the big white horse because he, I'm into unicorns and stuff like that. You know, the God forces that come down and depart the wisdom of the ages. And I always saw your beautiful horse, sweetheart. Is I, I just can't believe this. Her horse has a condition they call grass sickness, and that that's got me a little interested in this because it's um, Clostridium uh, botulism, sort of speak. It's a it's a it's a bacterium called uh, Clostridium botulinum or whatever, and. Uh, you know, it's a sad thing to look at that because I think, first of all, she asked me what we can do about horses in this sort of condition, and I raised around horses and never heard this. But then again, that was a lot of years ago. I, and it, they considered a neurotoxin bacteria that gives neurotoxins off of there. I'll say this, neurotoxins are a tough side of life because they adhere to the nervous system, stuff like this, slut down the nervous systems in the body. You know, sometimes you have to detoxify your horses. The sad thing about animals, they have to breathe this air and deal with the grass that all this pollution is falling onto. And there's so many neural toxins that bacteria is just everywhere to try to deal with these toxins that man's created. You know, nature's just trying to equal the sides, to be honest with you. Nature is trying to survive what man has done to itself here. And we throw neural toxins in the air. There's over 2,000 chemical known neural toxins out there, probably more. Some of them are airborne, you know, in the air, and then go down on the grass into the water. And I think the same thing's happening to our animals is that in, in, in the oceans and in the lakes where you're seeing mutation of fish and stuff. And, this, and Joseph died because of this guy. This is this beautiful white horse. Died from this grass fever. Well, the first thing, when you're dealing in horses, the problem with the tinctures and things is that they're so inadequate that I would probably get more bulk herbs and work with them because we've worked with several horses. We have used the tinctures on them, but we've used bottles, you know, and that's the problem. Very expensive, so you can get the bulk herbs, but there's plenty of uh, antibacterial herbs that could handle this type of problem for that horse. But you would do the same thing with this horse. You would get into the kidneys. You would clean up the bowels. Now, this is a long bowel. And you would work on this horse the same way you'd work on a human. 
to be honest with you. A lymph system the same way, antibiotics the same way, get the kidneys filtering the same way. Because again, you got to go back to why doesn't the body deal with neurotoxicity or any toxicity? You say, well, you eat it, it comes into the body. But I have to say that even the animals now, with the breeding and everything, they're bred in with kidney weaknesses, they're bred with thyroid weaknesses. I mean, horses are like all the other animals. The way we bred horses now, that, and, and all animals, they have all these weaknesses in them. Remember we talked about the dogs. Dogs are notorious for kidney weakness. Well, guess what? They have all the lymphatic problems. So look at how many tumors are in dogs. I talked about uh, Dr. Poe and how the uh, uh, veterinarian that works for him uh, said, oh, there's a swelling in this uh, dog's neck, a lip node. Let me cut it out and see what it is and stuff. And it's like, you really needed to do that. You really needed to cut out a lymph node, compromising this dog's ability to move lymph out of its head to see what might be wrong with it. That's where the stupidity of allopathy comes in. When you can simply give that dog some herbs, clean out the lymph nodes, get the kidneys filtered, clean that up and you're good. Now they took the lymph node out. Wasn't anything wrong with it? She could see. Of course not. Why does lymph node swell in the first place? Could be a drainage problem, shall we say? Why does your septic tank back up at home? Could be a blockage, should we say? See what I'm talking about? So this saddens me to no end because I'm a horse lover. And this was a this was a unicorn horse. This was Pyth Pythagoras, if you will. Or, uh, uh, not Pythagoras, but, um, you know, the flying horse. I think Pythagoras probably rode him. Don't you think? So I feel, I'm sick about this. I'm just sick about this, honey. I can't believe that this would happen. It's a type C toxin, high in the intestinal tract which is the perfect place to be because you can get into that intestinal tract pretty easy and clean that out of them. So you would detox. Remember, detox your horses like anyone else. Remember the Hoxie, Dr. Hoxie and his racehorses, and the hot famous cancer formula that Hoxie developed out of watching his one horse that had a tumor eat the herbs out in the field, and his tumor went away. That's the story anyway. And so famous story of how Hoxie and his famous cancer formula was developed. And when you look at that, it starts to pull you back to the herbs again. And that horse knew, intuitively knew the herbs he needed to clean this tumor out of him. And of course, then, then Hoxie put it in his formula. But you could use the Hoxie formula on your horse. Our lymphatic formula is stronger than that. All those things. That's where you'd want the bulk herbs to go through the digestive tract as they work on the intestinal wall. But I submit to you that probably, and I don't know if you grain feed, but I would say this, it is unnatural to grain feed horses. Now, we fed our horses oats, but we had our best horse founder broke into the oat bin. Of course, horses don't know how to stop eating like cows. Cows know how to stop when they're full. Horses, they'll just keep on eating. Well, that creates, of course, grains are acidic like oats, and it creates high acidosis. We call it foundering. Used to kill them for that. Now, not so much. People learn how to detoxify their animals. So we lost a good horse and didn't need to. My dad didn't know any better. Old guy, you know, he came out an old farmer. He didn't know any better. It's enough to say, though, with oats and with everything like that, take a look at your, your grains, all the mucus that these grains uh, impact on the bowel walls. Notice when you detoxify all the mucus you get out in your stools. Some of that's all plastered on and just in the mucosa on the bowel wall. A lot of foods are mucus forming and your glutens, proteins and things like that are very mucosic responsive as we talked about early on in the videos. And the same thing for animals. So when you get an animal that's got a problem, first of all, get them off of all man's foods and get them more. Now she used alfalfa here, alfalfa hay and stuff like that. I'm not reading the whole thing because... I've got to turn this off, but this is just, I'm depressed almost. Beautiful horse died from something like this. And I have to say that when the pollution is high in the air, the pollution is high when you have acid rain, uh, the condition of our grains are toxic, uh, all these things. So you have to look at all these things, but use the herb sweetheart always on your horses or anybody. I love the herbs and animals are keen to that and detoxify them just like you would. 
Use your parasitic for herbs. Use your lymphatic herbs right down the intestines. Get the kidneys filtering on these animals. Same thing. Just a bigger, bigger being. A much bigger being. That's the problem. So you have to work with them. Think about your other horses too, by the way. You might want to start them on a little detox with uh, some lymphatic formulas or hoxy formula or our lymphatic herbs and maybe do a little parasitic cleanse on them, you know. Clean out the parasites. Horses get worms and stuff. You know, deworm your horses and stuff. And we're just going to have to work, all of us together, to keep our animals safe because they're not safe going outside. We aren't safe going outside. And if these chemtrails are real, oh, that, that just, that's another freak thing. I don't know. So all I can say is I'm saddened by the loss of Joseph, that beautiful white horse. That, that's vomitous to me. And it just emphasizes how important it is to keep our animals healthy as well as we are. And grains are not healthy for any animal whatsoever. Notice how in dog food, they tried to start getting the grains out of it and putting more vegetables. Absolutely. So if you look what's going on out there, you see that a lot of animals have been hurt from man's ignorance and a lot of humans. So the world needs you guys. They need you guys to get yourselves well and to be a light to the world of truth, integrity. Always be truthful. And always have strong morals, you know, and love each other. That's the way to be. So I love you guys. I appreciate you taking your precious time and bringing me into your home or your car or wherever and listening to these tapes. Uh, I, I'm, I'm your best friend, I hope, because I love you. And we know how to get you well, get yourselves well. And uh, one of these days, we'll have a big seminar where I can give each and every one of you a hug. That's a lot of hugs. Love you guys. You have a fun night. You're probably not going to get this one till next week. This is Friday, I think. So, unfortunately, hopefully Chris could get it up at home. I don't know. I better get him before he goes home. So, I love you guys. You have fun tonight. And may the blessings be to every one of you.